Howdy folks, thanks for tuning in to the Media Current Friday 5 video series. A series of videos that highlight five things, five ways, or just spend five minutes on various topics. I'm Mark Casillas and with me this episode is Drupal developer slash Florida travel guide Derek Reese. How's it going out there? Hey, it's going pretty good, Mark. Excellent, excellent. All right, so this episode we're going to give to you, our fair listener, five Drupal 8 development tips. How about we start with number one, use a VM. Sure. So best practices for Drupal 7 usually means using a virtual machine like Vagrant to handle your local development. This makes it a lot easier for deployments and troubleshooting in a team environment. In Drupal 8, however, you may need to remount your config directories due to a changing target inside your hosting environment or needing to add or remove development configurations such as the local-only config folder. This is useful for instances where you have configuration that's specific only to your local dev environment. Inside Vagrant, you're going to run a sudo unmount command, and it's umount. There's no in in there. And that's going to go ahead and unmount your existing configuration directory that you're using. On your local, you're going to go ahead and edit your etc. exports file, and you're going to rename your configuration. And then you're going to go ahead and restart your NFS directory services on your Macintosh OS. Once that's complete, Inside Vagrant, you're going to go ahead and create your new configuration directory and then run a sudo mount command again. Make sure to replace the IP address with your host IP address from your Macintosh directory. Number two would be painless local testing tweaks, including disabling modules. So sometimes, when you need to test some items with a new custom module real quick without reloading the entire DB, or if you need to repair a live Drupal 8 DB gone wrong, for that database, you can manually edit the configuration with a few extra steps. So your first step for manually disabling a module is to go ahead and run a query and take a look and find out what the actual core extension setting is for that module. Then you're going to go ahead and update the data array so that the module and integer setting are removed. From there, you can update the extension array length and you're going to decrement it just by one. Then you actually run the SQL command to go ahead and set the updated SQL. This is the tricky part that usually gets missed. You're going to need to delete your files PHP directory for Drupal 8 for the live site that you're working with. After that, you can clear caches and reload. So step three is still another painless local testing tweak, schema updates. So continuing from manually disabling modules, you can also force schema updates for repair or testing purposes. For manually updating a module schema in Drupal 8, you're going to go ahead and run a query and go ahead and pull the key value from your module name after that's complete, you're going to reset the value to the desired schema version. Once that's complete and you've updated the data to what you need, you can go ahead and run an update query in SQL. After that, you go ahead and clear the caches, and you shouldn't have to delete any PHP cache files this time. Number four is actually a big one because it is debugging and developing in Twig. So for debugging manually, um, you'll need to update a couple of your configuration items that are set in your sites folder. So you want to locate your site services.yaml file, likely located in the site's default services.yaml file directory. Then you want to edit the file and enable one or more of the debugging options defined there. After that's complete, go ahead and rebuild the cache. You can also locate the twig.config parameters in your services.yaml and make changes there. If you need to only inspect a single variable, go ahead and make a template modification by using the dump command. Add that to any point within your template file and it will echo the actual result there. Excellent. And then the fifth and final tip, which D8 must use modules are out there? This is the reason you're all here. Our recommendations for Drupal 8 modules as of this very moment. Our first one that we want to talk about is display suite and interview modes. Those are now in core. We also want to recommend C tools, beans, and context, which have now been integrated with Core. Blocks now have all sorts of additional functionality that usually required Contrib. For Contrib that should be in Core, we'd like to recommend block visibility groups or page manager and panels. We'd also like to talk about inline entity form. If you're using an abundance of entity reference fields, combining inline entity forms with edit display modes makes it a lot easier to handle. Another twin pairing, draggable views or entity queue, is useful for content ordering. We like ours to be separate from views configuration, so we prefer entity queue and go ahead and allow you to hide views UI. The field group module. This editor UX out of the box is much improved over Drupal 7, but Drupal 8 has a ways to go. Field groups is an absolute necessity for organizing complicated content types and should be on every site that has them. Finally, the media module. 
Drupal 8 core file handling is better than Drupal 7's, but you'll still need the media modules to get anywhere with a media-heavy site. Media has been split into multiple modules so you can pick and choose what you need. Excellent, Derek. Thank you for that great list, and thank you everybody for joining us. If you have any questions or want to suggest a topic, please email us at friday5 at mediacurrent.com. Now, go get on with your weekend. Hey, Derek, let's show them how to high-five. Thank you.